Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today, my video is going to be about reading fill in the blanks, okay? Now, reading fill in the blanks is not an easy class, okay? It's not, some topics in the PT exams are like really, really easy, okay? Some topics in the PT exam are quite hard. And this is one of those topics that's going to, you know, uh, slow you down, gonna pull you down. It's not going to be easy in this section. Now, the question is why? Okay, why is this topic a little bit hard than other topics in the PT exam? Because it requires purely on grammar. So try to understand, okay? Think about it. When is the last time have you done grammar? When is the last time have you done grammar? I'm a teacher, okay, in PT. And even for me, teaching grammar, I mean, it's not easy okay it's not easy and i sometimes i find it boring but yes i'm gonna make you okay i'm gonna try to make you like my class okay i'll try to make you understand what i want you to do okay what is my objective um in this topic so that you can smash pt exam and my class okay i'm always gonna try to motivate you and always gonna try to say yes 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 you can get your score okay that's what it is about so grammar technically it's a very boring class i hope i can make it interesting and i hope from this video okay you can start practicing in iowa software okay and start solving some of the blanks so let's get started all right so if you look at your screen right now okay if you look at your screen right now you can see that there are three blanks okay and there are options at the bottom okay so your job is to drag the words and put them in there drag the words and put them in there now sounds easy how hard can it be just dragging the words and put them in the problem is when you drag the words okay you usually choose the wrong ones as a result there's no mark all right so i just want to give you some basic facts some background about this question all right you will get four or five of these questions in the pt exam four or five okay and the blanks as you saw before in the previous slide it could be anywhere between three to five blanks maximum okay so it's pretty random how many number of blanks you're going to get but we usually generally say that you're going to get average 20 blanks now if you are after 65 okay um, even you need 50 okay 50 means six band in the IELTS exam which I still want you as a teacher because you bought this course isn't it and I would like you to get at least seven band okay you need to try for seven that's your job okay or try to get eight band so the way I'm gonna be teaching you is that okay I think you're an awesome person and I would like you to get at least seven band okay just remember that so out of 20 blanks in total okay so let's say it again 20 blanks on average you need to get 15 correct okay you need to target 15 correct now that's not easy okay and i want to teach you how to get 15 correct now out of 20 blanks, it's pretty average because what's gonna happen maybe let's just say um tom he's gonna get eight tech he's gonna get 19 okay uh, Navid he's gonna get 22 so it's pretty random how many blanks you will get in the exam but on average you'll get 20 and you need to get 15 correct so just keep that in mind okay now out of those 15 blanks so how do you usually generally solve these blanks question okay what is PT really looking for well PT is only looking for one answer okay and that is vocabulary how much word do you know okay now most of us even including me okay we are second learners okay we are second learners english from a second country okay so for us understanding word meaning can be pretty difficult okay it's just because you know like because we haven't been practicing um english or we haven't been writing too much english we've not been speaking too much english. even we did it's very limited so when pete when we come to academic test okay uh, word meaning is essential okay now you including me as well okay anybody out there we don't have time to memorize the dictionary that's the thing okay 
but the thing is PT really really wants you to understand the word meaning okay and get them right so that's the only way okay that's the only way you have to know the word meaning now is there any other way we can solve okay if you don't know the word meaning so what are you gonna do because you don't have a phone on your you, know, you won't have Google to search word meaning so how do you solve it well the thing is the next best thing is we're gonna make a guess okay we're gonna make a guess and usually we want to make the guess in a proper way okay so today I'm gonna be teaching you how to make a guess all right I'm gonna teach you how to make a guess um, if you know the word meaning good for you if you don't know the word meaning we need to make a guess and usually we need to make an accurate guess and that can still give us that 15 out of 20 okay so if you have a look at the slide it says that either you, um, you know the word meaning on the left side or you know grammar rules yes so we're gonna use some formulas some shortcuts okay and we can make a good guess and we can get it right now I want to give you a small example of this okay how to use word meaning and how to use um, grammar to solve these questions now look at this slide now this is an actual PT question okay so in front of you it's an actual PT question now a B C D E so there are five options here and in the PT exam um, you're going to get at the bottom okay the the option that you're gonna have at the bottom there's gonna be number of blanks plus there'll be three extra so in this case there's five blanks you can look at the bottom there are total eight now I would like you to make a guess how many words do you know at the bottom have a look look at the words like from fossilized counterparts capturing all the way until submissive how many words do you know have a look just just try to make a guess yeah quickly just have a look okay don't get nervous just tell me how many words you know all right think about it pause this video pause and tell me how many words you know okay so I hope you have looked at the words okay I'm because I'm talking on a video okay you're not in front of me okay I'm just gonna tell you what my students in the class what they say okay most of them tells me that they know three words out of I mean out of all they say or four or five maximum seven words okay now whatever words you know probably you're gonna say Nahid I probably know four words from here or maybe five words that's a very common number okay now think about it so you said that you know only four words just let's just take that for an example so you the only thing you can do like there are five blanks and there are four words you only know okay that means you're not gonna able to answer one blank right that's a problem that's a problem you only know four words so what about the last blank what are you gonna do you're gonna probably make a guess that's that's what you're gonna be doing right now what have what if the four words but they are total eight you only know four right so rest of the four words that you don't know what if these are answers for a b c and d think about it what are these answers for a b c and d that means the four words you know it didn't help the four i mean the words that you knew okay it didn't come in help that's what i'm trying to say sorry about that the four words that you knew it did not help and the four words the rest of the words that were just left out they're the answers for a b c and d so basically you're not getting anything right probably maybe you're in a very luck you might get one or two correct but that's not the aim we want to get at least okay out of five blanks at least get three correct that's our been four would be awesome but we need to get three correct now let's come back so based on the words that you know okay you have paused the video before looking at the words can you tell me the answer for a make a guess just go ahead make a guess what's the answer for a tell me that okay pause the video and tell me what's the answer for a all right now did you choose your answer okay now I'm gonna read out okay and I'm gonna tell you the answer right now let's see whether you got it right or not okay so have a look 
Clownfish became famous thanks to the movie Finding Nemo. In real life, the social hierarchy is simple. Large fish, okay, have you watched the movie Finding Nemo, by the way? Pretty good movie, okay, watch it if you haven't, watch it. So, it's saying here that large fish, the large ones, dominate, that means having power, over or dominate their smaller dash. Large fish is dominating their smaller dash. So basically, it's probably the meaning would be the large fish are dominating the smaller fish, right? That's what I'm trying to say. So which word will be the answer? Okay, which word in A will be the answer? Most students, okay, from the class would say counterparts. Okay, I'm not sure whether you got it. If you did, well done. Um, some student might say climate or something like that, but most students would say counterparts. Now, I don't know sure why they would choose climate, but it doesn't make sense, like smaller climate, but large fish are dominating their counterparts, right? Now, the question is, why did you get it right? I mean, why did everyone or I mean, most of students choose counterparts? That would answer me that Nahid, I think it's because that's the only word that makes sense. Okay, that could be a good reason. Okay, or number two, I know the meaning of counterparts and that's why that's the answer. Now, what is counterpart? Counterpart basically means opposite. Okay, so like opposite sex could be male, female. Okay, or large, small. Okay, tall, short. So this is what counterpart means, opposite. So the large fish are dominating their smaller fish, so smaller counterparts. Now, in the PT exam, you got that right, or most students will get that right because they know the meaning of counterparts. But what happens if you don't know the meaning? What are you gonna do? You're gonna probably make a guess. So is there any shortcut for this? To be honest, no, okay? If you don't know the meaning of counterparts, that's zero and there is no shortcut. You just have to memorize the meaning of counterparts. That's the thing. So that's a bit drawback, isn't it? Like, okay, mm, right, what I'm gonna do then in the PT exam if I, if I don't know the word meaning? Well, let's go to the B now, okay? Can you tell me the answer for B? Okay, tell me the answer for B, okay? Have a look, pause the video again and tell me the answer for B. Okay, here we go. Okay, now I'm not sure what you chose, but most students would have chosen um, the, the answer that I would get submissive. I would probably get answer like potential. Recorded is a very popular answer because audio, recorded audio, recorded audio, you might have chosen that, recorded audio. Some student does pick the word linguistic. So submissive, um, potential, recorded, okay, linguistic. These are the popular answers in my class, okay? Now, which one did you choose? All right, now for B, I want to give you a shortcut. So this is where, in, in blank B, this is where you can use grammar, okay? In A, you couldn't, but in B, you can, okay? So this is, I'm going to be teaching you today 13 grammar rules. There's more than that, actually. There's more than that, but I'm going to be teaching only 13. That's going to be enough to get that 15 correct, okay? I don't want you to stress out, learn lots of grammar, okay? Just enough to pass your PT exam. That's my aim, okay? I just want you to get your part, um, PT exam. Um, so if you think about it, okay? If you think about it, how do I do B, okay? Now, one of my students, okay, who already has a reading score of 90 in the PT exam, okay? 90, 79 plus. He or she will able to tell this answer in two seconds, okay? He'll be like walking like this. And suddenly, if I ask him, can you tell me the answer for B? And he he would say, Nahid, the answer is submissive. Okay, but how is that possible? How can you answer something in like walking and then suddenly telling you that's the answer. Well, there is one of the grammar rules. So listen up. One of the grammar rules is that 
when you see a blank, right? If you're on your screen, look at the blank. Okay, the word before the blank and word after the blank, you need to see what words are there. In this case, it's my lucky day because I can see and in there. So and is a conjunction. Okay, and is a conjunction. There is a formula that we're going to be applying. It's called rule of conjunction. So the rule of conjunction says that, okay, that the word before and after, same words, same preposition, same phrases applies. Now, let's just make it an easy way of saying that. The word before and the word after the blank, if you see and, of course, in this case, you can see and, the word before and and the word after and, okay, it looks the same, like twin brothers, okay? twin brothers you know how twins are they look exactly the same they wear the same clothes same colors everything's same isn't it so exactly the same so let's look at the word before and so in this case the word is aggressive now the word ends with ive isn't it ive all we have to do is look after the end another word that ends with ive okay and the answer is of course submissive so, and it always works in the PT exam like this. That's the best part. Okay. So you just, if you can just remember if there is a conjunction in this, just remember most of the PT question that when you start solving in Iowa, you will see that there are either and, but, and or. Okay. And, but, and or. So if you see these ones, rule of conjunction applies. Okay. So aggressive, submissive, sometimes you're going to see words like health, and dash so which word comes with the word health like health and well-being so that's another answer okay so they look for similar similar words when there is a conjunction that's called rule of conjunction so that's one mark for sure think about it one mark hundred percent so that means out of 15 you got 14 more to go now there's only one problem with this strategy okay the thing is if you notice in A it worked, I mean in A it did not work. Okay. So what I'm trying to say that in A you really had to know the meaning of counterpart. So there was no shortcut for that. In B, we use grammar to solve it, right? Now for C, what about for C, D, and E? For E, there is a grammar rule, but for C and D, no grammar rule. So that means grammar. Okay, Pete is not testing your grammar here. Remember, I'm saying again, he's testing your word meaning. So these formulas will not work in each and every blank. So if you get 20 blanks, you're probably going to be able to get maximum 10 blanks using these formulas. And rest of the five, six blanks, you have to depend on word meaning. So that means we have to read the sentence and make a guess. All right. Now, how you can you improve this? Well, you can only improve this the more questions you solve. The reason I'm here teacher today, because I solve a lot of questions, I know a lot of the answers, okay? And that's why I became a teacher. So the more you solve, the more words you're gonna know. The good thing is just letting you know, PT repeats the same words again and again. So as long as you know some words in the PT exam, or you can solve uh, probably about 500 blanks, okay? you should be able to do okay okay you should be able to get that 15 correct now let's move to the next slide okay i know i'm talking a lot okay but this this is a grammar i need to talk a lot and it is a long class by the way it's probably the longest video you're watching okay the other questions in the pt exam are much much easier very short talk but this one is a grammar you really need to understand you really need to be focused and so i'm trying to be as entertaining as possible all right so let's move to the next slide again all right so before i start um, i need to go back to your school okay when you go back in time okay when you go back in time so how old were you at that when you did school probably year six probably what like 12 years old okay think back probably 10 years back or 15 years back maybe a bit more maybe some of you a bit more okay some bit less okay so when we did grammar in school i know that you forgot okay i'm not saying that you should remember grammar even you do then you are a very smart guy okay i'm not i'm not that smart guy but most of us doesn't know grammar and we forgot what we learned in school okay this is very normal now 
that's why I just want to recall the grammar. Let's see how you can remember, okay? So if you look in front of you in this slide, okay, because to apply these 13 grammar rules, okay, we need to know some basic things about the grammar, okay, to apply these rules. Just keep in mind, okay? So number one is that you need to know parts of speech. There are eight parts of speech. You only need to know four. That's all it requires for our PT exam. Mm -hmm. These are noun, verb, adjective, and adverb noun verb adjective and adverb noun verb adjective and adverb these four things that you need to know and let's just gonna go through in brief and try to understand what these grammars i mean what these words are okay and why they are related to our pt exam okay so there's a definition on top but i'm just gonna say in my own words what does what is a noun noun has several definitions but the basic thing that everyone says a noun is a name of a person, okay? So it could be Michael Jackson, Jennifer Lopez, Shah Rukh Khan, Nahid, okay? All these, these are names, names of a person. But these names, or PT does not have people's name. So forget about this definition, okay? So it's out, it's out. The second definition of a noun is the name of a place. So it could be name of a place could be like like Australia, like a name of a country. Okay, it could be India, Vietnam, China, any name of a country, any name of a place where you live. Okay, the town that you're living, any names. There are also nouns as well. But the thing is, in the PT exam, you don't get name of a place. So name of a person and name of a place. Uh, of a place it does not come in the PT exam okay the third one okay which will come in the exam the third one is name of objects okay or a thing you call it so in front of you you're probably watching me on a um, you're probably watching me on a phone or probably watching me um, on front of the laptop so your laptop is an object so laptop is a noun a phone is a noun okay in your room so you're probably wearing a watch is a noun okay your clothes a noun the wall is a noun so all objects if you look outside okay the sun the moon okay are nouns cars streets are noun okay so all these are noun these do come in the exam some of the exam question that comes in the exam so for example computer okay volcano the forest the sea okay reptiles snakes eggs okay what else um trees um these comes owls that's a that's a question that you're going to be doing later on the video okay owls that's also a noun so all objects are nouns. so keep that in mind so we're going to get that in the exam all right one more thing that's going to be most of your words going to be under fall into this this definition are called nouns are abstract abstract nouns abstract nouns what is abstract nouns? The words with our five senses, okay? With our five senses. What are senses? Now, we cannot see, we cannot smell, we cannot taste, we cannot touch, okay? We cannot hear. These are our five senses. So with our five senses, we cannot do anything with these words. So for example, democracy. So if you look on your screen, democracy. Can we taste democracy? Probably no. Can we um, touch it or listen the word democracy? Probably no. All right. Generosity. Okay. Uh, can we see generosity? Not really. Okay. Technically, we can't. So these kind of words are called um, abstract now. And why are we learning this? Because the words at the bottom. Okay. The words at the bottom in the PT exam. If you remember, the words at the bottom. There are going to be nouns in there. So I'm going to say to you, okay, in blank B, guys, I need a noun. Can you give me a noun word? So you should be able to spot, okay, that word is a noun, that word is a noun. Nahid wants that in the answer. So we have to know which word is a noun because it's related to our formula, okay? That's why we're learning this, all right? So I hope you understood what is a noun. Now, what I would like you to know, what's important, is that Pete is not going to ask you what is a noun, so don't worry about it. But you need to know which word is a noun. So we're going to identify which word is a noun. So let's move on, all right? Let's go to the next slide. So in front of you, you can see there is a word 
um, there are five words at the bottom okay a b c d and e so one of the ways you, you can identify a word is a noun or not is just put an s at the end okay just try to put an s and it becomes a plural and it's a noun so for example like um i've got one here in front of you have a look bottle let's put an s at the end bottles so it's a noun pen pens okay shoe shoes um what else table tables chair chairs okay light lights so anything that becomes a plural form and that's a noun okay okay so let's do together so let's look on the screen a development is that development a noun well 50 50 i don't know is development a noun maybe maybe not okay what do you think is development a noun okay development developments that's a bit could be confusing okay some of my students say yes development is a noun some students say development is not a noun well to be honest i mean to be truthful development is a noun developments okay one development two development three development in your country how many developments are happening so development is a noun okay b skill skills that's a noun right that's an easy one right implication Impl let's put an s at the end implications so my phone has so many implications so that's a noun independent your country is independent let's put it at the end independent d with a dns independence nope that's not a noun okay independence is not a noun what about sensible he's a sensibles guy do you say he's a sensible guy or you say he's a sensibles guy no you don't so sensible is not a noun so only noun takes plural form okay now the question is um if i put an s sometimes it's i mean you can do it i mean you can tell it's a noun sometimes you can't so that's a problem okay sometimes you can't so in that case is there any other shortcut yes there is there is hope thank god there is another shortcut okay so this shortcut let's move to the next slide now you have a printout so i've got it in um in hard copy so in your um on your screen download it okay um today's printout reading fill in the blanks yes you need to solve those questions we're gonna be doing it later on um in your printout move to page number two okay move to page number two um and on your screen of course um the next slide okay if you look at the next slide so in this slide you can see something called prefix and suffix do you remember something in school i think you do prefix and suffix okay so if you look at in front of you all right so these are adverb verb nouns and adjective okay so let's look at the suffix or the tail of nouns okay there's five in front of you there's more than that but i just said i want to make your life easy i'm just going to go with the basic ones okay that's going to be enough for you to pass your pt test okay so we need to memorize this right now okay we can't go to the next slide okay we won't be moving forward even if we have to pause the video and memorize it okay so let's look at the suffixes of the nouns in front of you so these are ness okay you have meant you have uh shun so shun is spelled two different ways s-i-o-n and t-i-o-n you have i-e-t-y-e-t -E -E and you have ends a and c and e and c the spelling could be different but the sounds are all the same so these are the five suffixes of a noun so as you can see all right that for suffix of a noun okay so let's say some of the words like ness softness hardness fitness all ness okay if you see any word like these ones it's a noun you don't have to put an s straight away you just know straight away that ness is a noun that's it all ness are noun all right number two meant do you remember earlier that development government supplement okay entertainment environment these are 
noun. So any meant is a noun. Memorize it right now. You're watching me and memorize it, okay? And then we have shun. So T-I-O-N, S-I-O-N, production, introduction, conclusion, okay? Inclusion. So all these words are also noun. Any shun is a noun. Next one is iti. Now iti can be um, spelled different ways. So like for example, T-Y, I-E-T-Y, um, just um, I-T-Y. So some of the spelling would be city, society, variety, utility, okay? All these are nouns. Last one is ens, so, okay? Importance, substance, ambulance, fragments, variance, ens, ens. These are also nouns. So please memorize these five uh, suffixes at least. Now let's go to the top, okay? If you go to the top, okay, you see that adverb. Okay, adverb is the easiest. Again, I'm just telling you, there are other adverbs as well, but this is the most common one. We all, I'm only giving in this table the most common ones, okay? So adverb is L-Y. Any L-Y, it's an adverb. Just, just keep that in mind. Any L-Y, it's an adverb. Easy, just one. All right, now let's look at the next one. It's the verb. Verbs are what? Action word, action word action words are verbs okay any actions that are happening these are verbs now for example walk talk play uh, jump ride drive dance okay all these are verbs eat sleep okay these are all verbs at the same time all ing are verbs okay Walking, talking, playing, singing, watching, sitting, lying, laughing, okay? Probably you're laughing at me, what I'm doing right now. So laughing, okay, giggling, okay, smiling. All these are verbs, any ing. And the last one is ed, okay? Eds are also uh, verbs, all past tense words, eds are verbs, okay? There are adjectives as well, but I don't want you to make you confused. Just remember, eds are verbs. Just for this sake, for this class, eds are verbs. Just keep that in mind. All past tense words, eds are verbs. So now if you noticed, we have memorized the five suffixes of nouns. Nes, men, shun, ed, okay? And what's that? Now what is left? It's the adjective. When I was making this video, okay, before I was making this video, when I was typing in Google, okay, the odd one out is an adjective, okay? Think in a way, the odd one that I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you a word. If it's not in this list, it must be an adjective. Let me give an example. Creative, creative, T-I-V-E. Let's have a look at the list. Is T-I-V in adverb, L-Y? No. Is it in verb, I-N-G-E-D? No. Is it in the noun, T-I-V-E, T-I-V-E? No. That means it must be an adjective. So a word, if I give you, it's not in the list, it must be adjective. Beautiful, you're beautiful, you know? You are beautiful, okay? God created us beautiful, so you must be beautiful. Okay, so, or handsome, okay? So beautiful, F-U-L, full. Full, okay. So, is it in the list? L Y, E D, I N G. None of the five suffixes of a noun. Full, F U L. So it must be adjective. It must be adjective. Is that clear? Not bad, right? Easy, right? We need to keep this in mind. So, please do pause again. Okay, and I would like you to. You know, think back again, okay? Put that pause, think and look at these words again and move to the next slide. So don't go to the next slide until you just have these in your head because we're gonna be using them again and again and again. So put that pause button and just wait, okay? Is it over now? Yeah, did you pause? Was it like, did you remember or you didn't, okay? Let's move to the next slide, okay? Next move to the next slide. All right, now let's play a quiz. I'm gonna play a small little game, okay? Just want to see whether you did make that pause and you did practice okay so this is a front of you again another question in front of you 
all right now what i'm not looking for is that you can see at the bottom okay there are some words and can you please tell me how many words are now okay so let's make another pause again and this time i would like you to make a guess how many words are now are there two nouns three nouns four nouns yeah from fictionalize conventions creativity until attracting tell me how many nouns are there okay two three four five six tell me the number so let's put that pause button first and all right welcome back okay so how many nouns are there there are four nouns okay four nouns let's let's let me tell you frictionalize okay i-z-e is that a noun no it's not a noun what is it i don't know it's not my problem but it's not a noun okay number two i can see shun t-i-o-n shun and it has an s in it noun takes plural form do you remember that formula noun takes plural form plus shun is there so that's a noun that's one okay number two it do you remember it creativity that's a noun that's two number three challenges that's an s isn't it do you remember noun takes plural form s that's a noun okay that's three okay ed what is ed verb isn't it yep ed is a verb so that's not a noun okay next one meant enforcement development government so that's a noun so there were four okay what about ing verb right so that means there were four how many did you get three most students get three by the way most students say three okay so if you got four right good job if you haven't got if you got three that's still okay not bad just remember this is how we pick what are nouns okay now let's do another quiz let's see do another quiz it's gonna get tougher okay let's move to the next slide all right now have a look okay. this time you're looking for adjective okay this time you're looking for an adjective so make that pause again in that video take 30 seconds and tell me what you have got okay pause put that pause all right welcome back now how many did you get okay let, let's let's see let me help you out clues with an s clues s is there it's a noun so that cannot be an adjective. Optional, A-L, L-Y, E-D-I-N-G. None of the, it doesn't fall into any of the suffix of a noun. So that must be an adjective. So optional is an adjective. That's one for sure. Okay. E-T, celebrity, E-T, that's a noun, right? Dynamics, S is there, so that's a noun. Adults, S is there, that's a noun ing that's a verb so that means there was only one word and the answer is one did you get one all right probably you did okay thank you good job let's move to the next slide right. this time it's the verb it's a hard one okay it's a hard one and i probably know what you're going to choose by the way because it's almost everybody does the same thing and everyone makes a mistake as well so i know what you're going to be choosing but before i do that please pause that video again and tell me how many verbs are in here uh, just a clue this verb doesn't have an ing and ed by the way okay there are action words action words doesn't have an ing and ed so tell me how many verbs are in there okay pause okay welcome back okay how many one right that's what he said right one you found one probably you said shaking oh sorry shaken sorry shaken so shaken 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 yep so you probably chose that but did you know that justify is also a verb okay you justify something you judge something do you judge your friends sometimes yeah maybe yeah justify okay you justifying the situation okay justify is a verb so justify and shaken is a verb and rest of the words like celebration is a noun groups as s on there that's a noun um center center okay how do you know if the center is a noun or not let's put an s at the end center centers centers right 
how many PT centers in your area? Centers, okay, that's a noun. Movement, meant, and there's also an S there, that's also a noun. So probably you chose shaken, but justify is also the answer, okay? So there were two verbs. Now, if you got one, that's still awesome. If you got two, you're really awesome, okay? So that's it. Um, that was basically um, the purpose of this exercise to show you that when I'm gonna ask you for a noun, you have to know which word is a noun, which word is a verb, which word is an adjective, that's what you need to know, which word is an adverb, that's what you need to know, all right? So let's move to the next slide. All right, now in this slide, I just wanna quickly mention what is an adjective um, because out of those 20 blanks, if you remember, your PT is gonna be out of 20 blanks, five blanks, Okay, that's a lot. Five blanks will fall into this slide. So this slide is really important and it's probably the most important slide actually, in fact, okay? So you are gonna get five blanks from here, okay? So this blank is talking about adjective. What is an adjective? Adjective describes a noun, okay? Remember, adjective describes a noun. So for example, um, let's just take a pen. Let's just take a pen um, in front of me, okay? This pen, okay? A red pen so any word that you know you describe this pen it becomes an adjective so for example red pen can you tell me more white pen gray pen thin pen small pen second hand pen plastic pen okay so all these words are nouns now the question is why this is important to us because that, have you noticed that the word adjective came in front of a noun? Front of a noun. So we said plastic pen, red pen. Now, we, we did not say things like pen plastic, pen red, pen thin, okay? So that means adjective always comes in front of a noun. Adjectives and nouns are like besties. They come together, okay? But adjectives comes in front of a noun. So if you look on your screen, all the words in blue, okay, are nouns, okay? Batsman, candies, car, and money. And if there is a blank in front of it, you have to put the correct adjective that describes those blue words. So dangerous batsman, Virat Kohli, right? Dangerous batsman, 10 candies, okay? Red car, more money. The word more is an adjective as well. So this is a formula. If there is a blank and there is a noun next to it, that blank must be an adjective. So adjective plus noun. So mo there's gonna be a lot of, at least I said five blanks will fall into this category. So just keep it in mind. If there is a blank and there's a noun next to it, that blank must be an adjective, okay? Let's move to the next slide. This is the second most important slide. So you're gonna get five blanks from adjective maybe five from this slide as well, okay? You are gonna get five from this slide. So this is a verb, okay? You know what is a verb, okay? You know what is a verb. Uh, verbs are action words, all right? So if you look at the first one, okay, we call it present simple verb, or in this case it's, um, yeah, present simple verb or base form verb. They have different, different names like present verb, okay? I'm not sure what you call it in your school, but most school, they call it present simple verb. Now, what's the present simple verb here? Children play in the field. So the word play, the word play um, is a verb, right? Now, that's the basic thing. Now, rest of the four, I mean, look at them in very carefully because the rest of the four, they apply different, different formulas. Now, can you see, I've colored in yellow, two, T-O-2. If there is a blank after two, always remember, if there is a blank after two, okay? That two will be a be verb in simple form. So after two, verb in simple form. Always. You see two, it's your lucky day. Look for a verb, look for an action word, has no ing and no ed. Simple verb means no ing and no ed. So that's what the answer is, to play. All right? Keep that in mind. It's a very important formula. After two, verb will be in simple form. The next one is, is a past tense verb. Okay, if you look at here, it says that yesterday. Okay, that's why the verb is in past form, right? The word, because of the word yesterday. Now in the PT exam, you're not gonna get yesterday. It's too easy, okay? 
So what does PT, what kind of words do they use to mean it's a past? For example, before the time of Alexander the Great, during the World War II, in the 17th century, two decades ago, okay, in his last experience, this means all past tense, that time you have to use ED. Most of the PT questions are ED form, by the way. Okay, I'll talk about that later on. Most of the PT, if you don't know the answer, you want to make a guess, choose an ED word. Okay, most of the PT questions are ED. Okay, the next one, I think you know this one. I think everybody knows about this one is after have. Can you see that? After have, has, and had. Verb will be in what form? Tell me. We know this one, right? After have, has, and had. Verb will be in third form. Third form means ED, right? Most of the third forms are ED. There are some ENs and others as well, but most of the third form means ED. So after have, has, had, verb in your form, you will get two for sure from this, okay? You are gonna get something from have and has. There's gonna be blank from this. So just keep that in mind. You will definitely gonna get after two, verb will be in simple form. You're gonna get two from here as well. Though that's four blanks, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, one more. Um, this is called Girand. You don't have to memorize the name Girand. If there's a sentence starts with a blank, okay, this is not very popular, but there are some questions. If a sentence starts with a blank, can you see a sentence starts with a blank in front of you? Put an ing in there, okay? So in this case, swimming, okay? In the exam, there's one question called analyzing. So if you see a sentence starts with a blank, ing is the answer, all right? All right? So these are some basic things. Now, probably I've given you enough idea. So you, so far you have learned, so let's just quickly recap. You've learned that what is a noun, how to pick a noun, what is a verb, how to pick a verb, what is an adjective, how to pick an adjective, and adverb is an L-Y word. We did not say too much about an adverb. Actually, I didn't mention anything about adverb. Adverb is very simple. Adverb describes a verb, okay? I'm walking. How am I walking? Slowly, quickly, okay? Straightly, okay? Relaxingly. So all LYs describes the verb. So in this case, it was slowly. So just keep that in mind. We also need to know, uh, we'll have some questions, maybe one or two questions related to adverb as well. So this is what you have learned so far. We've kind of finished about 40 minutes of the video now. Okay, now we're going to move to the next section. And this time you need um, you need this printout, or in this case, it will be in front of you. You can download it, have a look. Um, I would definitely, when you're watching my videos, please watch it in laptop rather than on your phone, okay? Um, so I'll take the printout out, okay? Because we need to solve 60 blanks right now, okay? We need to solve 60 blanks right now. It's gonna take about 30 to 35 minutes, okay? Let's see how you go, all right? So we're gonna be solving from 16, um, the next 30 minutes we'll be solving questions, all right? All right, guys, now, are you ready? Did you get your printout out? Have you can see in front of you? I've got it in front of me, so it should look something like this. So you will be solving these questions, okay? So I've got it in front of me. Um, if you don't have it, it's always on the screen. You can see then the question. So let's start, okay? So we've got something to do. So for this section, you need to pause the video a lot because every time I'm gonna give you a little bit of time, um, about a minute, okay? Get about a minute and quickly with your pen, definitely with your pen, or if you're solving with your laptop, use, I mean, you know, just use a color to choose the answer, okay? Use a color, maybe yellow color to choose the answers, okay? And I'm gonna be talking about these, so we'll be doing 60 blanks. I just wanna mention one thing, um, is that every question you see in this screen, they're not made by me, by the way. They're all exam questions. So if you get these ones right, logically, Okay, you should be able to get the other questions right in the PT exam, okay? They could be easy, they could be hard, but these are all exam questions. If you think it's easy, then PT is easy. If you think it's hard, then PT is hard, okay? But we're gonna go through them together, okay? And I want to teach you how to pick the words, okay? So let's start rule number one, first slide. Have a look at the first slide, rule number one. So the rule number saying is that after A and the, Okay, let's have a look, number one, the, and there is a blank. Number two, 
the and there is a blank. Number three, a and there is a blank. Okay, if you see a and the, if there is a blank, answer is a noun. Clear? After a and the, the answer is a noun. So please pause this video now. I'm giving you one minute, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, one minute, and I will quickly like you to fill up this, okay? And then I'll tell you the answer, of course. Okay, pause the video. Okay, we're back. Okay, so let's see whether you got them right or not. Um, I'll tell you the answers anyway. Um, I'll tell you the answers based on what my students in the class say. I know that which ones they get stuck and which ones they get it right, okay? So, um, if you do get stuck in a particular question, please text me, okay? I'm always available, okay? With your course, I'm always available on Facebook. You can always text me personally and say, okay, Nahid, I did not understand that answer. I can explain as well, okay? But I'll go through. It's hard for me to understand which one you got right, which one you got wrong, but I'm just gonna be assuming your average student just like any other student in my class, okay? So number one, the answer is intention, right? The intention was that. So I think I got that one right for sure. Intention, because Sean was there, okay. Number two, the dash is so high that the answer is the demand. Nutritional is not the answer, because AL, that's an adjective. And the demand is so high, okay. The demand is so high. So that's the answer. The demand is so high, okay. Number three, at a distance. Ends is a noun, so at a distance. So Arab students will be uh, will be available to sign up to study at a distance. Okay, distance is the answer. Raise is a verb. Okay, raise is a verb. Number three, you might got this one wrong. Okay, now both method and both credits they're both nouns by the way. Okay, and most students choose the answer as credits, but they saw s. Okay. But you have to read the sentence to understand. Professor Morningham, on one of the 17 members elected in 2011, so he's been elected, okay, was recognized. He was recognized. Why was he elected? He was recognized for developing. So he developed something. He developed the dash. Did he develop a method or he developed a credit? You cannot develop credits. You earn credits, isn't it? So the answer is method. You develop a method, a formula, a method. Method is the correct noun here, okay? The reason I gave you two nouns just to make you confused, but the answer was method, all right? Let's move to number five. Um, the answer is taste, okay? Taste of the text, that means love for the book. You really need to be, have a taste for the text, it's a phrase. The answer is not specified because specified is a verb, isn't it? ED, it's a verb. So that cannot be the answer, all right? So what we learned here that, what's the take you're getting from here? If you see A and the, and there's a blank next to it, immediately the answer would be a noun, all right? Now let's move to the next slide. This time the article is N. N is a small, okay? N is special, sorry, not small, N is special. Like, you know, like kids, okay? Kids are specials, right? You know, if you are the youngest in your family, you are special because everyone has the attention over you. Okay, isn't it? That's what happens. I'm the smallest in my family and I get all the attention. I get all the benefits, isn't it? Um, so that's what it is, okay? Attention getter. So N, why is it special? Because it needs words like A, E, I, O, U, okay? Vowel sounds, A, E, I, O, U. So whatever answer you're gonna be putting in here, the answer will be A, I, O, U. It could be an adjective, it could be a noun, but the answer is A, E, I, O, U. Now, the first one, number one, um, I put both of them A, I, O, U, but of course, you have to read the sentence and see is the answer estimated or appetizing. In number one, if you read it, um, edible insects like termites, stick insects, dragonflies, grasshoppers, giant water bugs are on the menu of a dash 80% of the world population. That means 80% of the world population trying to eat them on the menu, right? Do you eat insects? Okay, so 80%. So is it eight, estimated 80% or is it appetizing 80%? Appetizing means hungry. Definitely we're looking for a number. So the answer is estimated, okay? I've done number one. Pause the video right now. And I would like you to answer two, three, four, and five. Pause the video, pause. All right, welcome back. Okay, now 
Number two, okay, the answer is in, um, important job. I think you got that one right. Number three, important part of our lives. I think you got that one right as well. Good job. Number four is even more easier because I, S cannot be the answer. So identical, that's also the, you got that right. And number five is individual. That's also, you got that right as well. I'm pretty sure you got that right. Individual, okay? Person cannot be the answer because A, E, I, O, U, okay? So just remember what we understood from this rule number two is that after N, okay, the answer has to be A, E, I, O, U, all right? Now let's move to the next slide, all right? This slide is most, the most popular slide of all. So out of these 13 grammar rules, this is the third grammar rule and this is the most pop, uh, popular slide. Now, I want to mention something that some of the teachers might not agree with me, okay? But I've done my research. I'm teaching you from seven years experience, okay? So they might not agree with me. Doesn't matter. You guys just trust me and you're going to get that score, okay? Just trust on me. Now, this is a secret formula. Now, 80% or even I want to say 90% of the PT questions are in passive sentences, okay? They're in passive sentences. So that helps us a lot. If the sentences are in passive form, okay, um, we can apply this formula. So just want to let you know, helping verb, okay? Helping verb. So the helping verbs are in front of you. Um, I would like you to, like, again, um, you can look in front of you. I'm going to say them out loud. Am, is, are, was, were, have, has, had, okay, be, been, and being, okay? These words, okay? Write them down on your pen, okay? Write them down with your pen. Come on, get your pen out, write them down. These ones I would like you to memorize. These are called helping verb. If you see a helping verb and there is a blank, okay, the answer is ed. Yep, the answer is ed because of the passive sentences. Okay, 80, 90% of chance, the answer is ED. Okay, so solve this question, put the pause video on, look for the ED answers, okay? Past form verbs. Okay, pause. All right, let's come back. Okay, number one, the answer is served up, right? The answer is served up. That's the only ED there. Number two, triggered a mud volcano. Triggered, that's called triggered a mud volcano. Number three, um, if you noticed, um, there is no helping verb. Have you noticed that? There's no helping verb there. So the question is, why did I give it to you? Because even there is no helping verb, the answers are most likely are ED. Do you remember one of the, I mean, earlier I said that most of the um, answers are ED. So this is that formula. So that means it was the word was in past tense. Okay. The water carried the mud to the surface. Okay. If you look at number four, okay. There was a helping verb, will, because one of my students asked me, Nahid, will and shall is a helping verb, right? Yeah, it is. It is a future tense helping verb. Can I put an ED? No, you can't. So will and shall is exceptional because they're talking about the future. So we cannot have ED in there. So the answer would be raise, right? That's what you did, raise. And again, we're coming back to the formula. Bean is there. That's a helping verb. So the answer would be tint, means getting smaller, tint. So what we learn from here, if there is helping verb, repeating again, am, is, are, was, were, have, has, had, okay, be, being, and been, make sure you wrote them down in your notes. You must write them on your notes. If you see this helping verb, if there is a blank, the answer would be ed, okay? Let's move to the next slide, okay? Do you remember this formula? We said it earlier, after two, if there is a blank, what's gonna be the answer? Yes, come on. Verb in simple form. Verb in simple form. What is verb in simple form? No ing and no ed. Let's pause this video and let's solve these questions. Let's pause. Okay, let's come back again. All right. So number one, um, what's the verb? Fetch, right? Number two, you don't have to read the whole thing. It's a big, long sentence. You don't have to read the whole thing. Just from after the comma. High pressure water to, high pressure water. What does it do? Water to explode. Explode is the correct answer. Okay, explode. Number three, Arab international education to dash of the region. 
meet the demand meet is the verb in simple form intake is a noun so meet the demand of the region all right number four the answer would be reserve or identify so some of you might get this one wrong i'm not really sure student to student does make a difference i mean get this one wrong sometime so dna is like blood okay dna can help the police to dash oh sorry this could be a different one dna can help the police to dash an individual what does dna do can identify so police is to identify uh, an individual all right number five it makes sense so dna so just like the blood bank okay we keep the blood we use it later dna's concept the same thing an institution in london can help to dash dna help to reserve dna so they keep the dna and use them later so an institution in london can help to reserve dna and use to match with the sample the answer is not illustrate we use the word illustrate in when it comes to pictures cover photos and things like that so the answer is not illustrate the answer is reserve means putting it away and using it later so what did you learn from here again after two the verb will be in simple form so we did not choose a word that has ed and ing all right let's move to the next slide okay so this is rule number five okay and do you remember if your sentence starts with a blank okay if a sentence starts with a blank it will be what do you remember sentence starts with a blank ing that's right but hang on there's a bit of uh what i'm going to say that there is a little bit more to this blank i mean to this question it does not always work that's the thing okay it does not always work so if a sentence starts with a blank okay yes your first job is to look for an ing but what if there is no ing okay what if there's no ing number two you need to look for a connecting word a connecting word so a connecting word could be however moreover moreover i'm uh, sorry however moreover however um, also but therefore despite okay these are called connecting words look for a connecting word so number one ing no ing is there number two look for a connecting word it will be the answer if even the connecting word is not there number three it will be a noun so that's the sequence number one ing no ing number two look for a connecting word number three look for a noun okay so let's pause this video and let's see your answer pause all right welcome back all right number one no ing was there so the answer was none the sorry nevertheless so he used a connecting word okay number two including unemployment that's right number three funding for higher education number four um, measuring because it's talking about global scale measuring and number five is a very easy one it's thinking back just letting you know most of the pt questions are easy when it comes to a uh, sentence starts with a blank so it'll be thinking okay pretty easy okay thinking back all right so what we learn from here that if the sentence starts with a blank we look for an ing or a connecting word but if those two are not there there can be a noun but i did not use an example here because i'm going to be using that for a quiz later on okay you'll be doing a quiz today all right and let's move to the next question next slide all right now this is rule number six we are now halfway i know okay um we can finish it off you're doing okay thank you for watching me okay uh hopefully i mean you've done you've done a lot of questions so far i'm proud of you so so now we're in the rule number six we've got rule number uh six or seven more to go we are in the halfway okay now this time have a look look at the color okay if you notice on the top it says noun preposition very specifically of so if you look at the blank okay there's a blank i've colored it if there is a blank which is in green and there is off next to it that blank will be a noun okay so the rule is basically noun plus off rule so blank and off so that blank will be a noun so let's try let's break put a pause and let's come back pause welcome back okay welcome back now here are the answers so i've got it in front of me so question number one okay what's the answer earlier the paris had been dash of a maze so what's the answer 
part of a maze okay part of a maze number two the most uh, physiological process occurs as the dash of chemical changes what did you put as the result of chemical changes number three other examples include the dash of oxygen now some of you might put the stages of oxygen stages is not the answer okay, what does oxygen do in the blood they store so storage of oxygen okay number four um, i did the other around this time shortage of supply so shortage of supply and number five if there is a blank and off again again dash of biological diversity the answer would be reservoir of biological diversity the answer is not diversity because you can't say diversity of biological diversity the word is repeated so it, the answer should be reservoirs of biological diversity okay so what did we learn again if there is a blank in front of off it should be a noun all right let's move to the next slide let's go okay next rule is that it's an adverb okay it's an adverb what you need to remember in this one is that adverbs comes with a verb if you remember noun comes with an adjective adverbs comes with a verb so i'm gonna um, this is an easy one okay it's gonna take only probably 30 seconds to solve so if you see a blank and a verb next to it if you look at number one blank and ed number two blank and ed developed number three blank and edu so if there's a blank and a verb next to it that blank must be a l y adverb so the answers would be just in a minute so I'll let me let you do it first let's pause the video again let's quickly solve it and now let me tell you the answer pause all right let's come back all right now if you have a look the first one should be simply raised number two largely developed number three generally used and number four would be completely undermined so pretty easy isn't it right and pd doesn't give you two ly so there'll be only one ly in the options at the bottom so you can quickly see a verb and just quickly put it in now but the answer can also the adverb can 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 come also um, at the back as well so here's an example same answers so it could be raised simply developed largely um, used generally and complete uh, undermined completely so adverb can come in front of the verb or at the back of the verb okay that's what it is so pretty simple all right i hope you understood let's move to the next slide okay so rule number eight okay rule number eight in rule number eight okay what we need to keep it in mind is that if there is a blank and there is a by next to it so blank so number one can you see blank and by number two blank and by okay if you see blank and a by in there all right so it must be that blank must be ed so if there is a blank in front of the preposition by it will be ed so let's pause the video let's pause the video and let's see what you get pause all right welcome back okay so in this blank the first one is answer would be honored by so pretty easy number two being created by that's right you got it right uh, number three would be taken by okay so remember taken is a past form past, sorry third form it's not a needy okay but taken it's a third form verb okay and number four would be influenced by so what we learned if there is a blank front of before the preposition by it will be ed all right let's move to rule number nine rule number nine let's move to the next slide nine rule number nine we already discussed it if you look at this there's a blank and a noun volcano blank and a computer blank and a process these are all object nouns what comes before an object noun you get an adjective right let's pause the video and let's see whether you can get the answers right okay pause all right all right let's come back all right number one the answer would be um conventional volcano conventional means old volcano so al is an adjective conventional volcano number two you might have picked applicable okay because ball is an adjective but unfortunately this is a rare case 
um, simulated computer because simulated looks like a verb ed but this is this word can be both it can be a verb it could be an adjective as well okay there are exceptional so in this case the word simulated is an adjective okay from simulation simulated computer so the answer is simulated okay number three would be laborious process laborious means long number four the answer is mysterious figure and number five I did the other around this time there was an adjective you need to put a noun in there two primary sources sources okay and two gave you means plural so what we learned here adjective plus noun keep this in mind all right let's move to the next slide okay all right this time rule of conjunction do you remember aggressive and submissive that's coming back okay so if you look at um, the slide in front of you okay Japan removed the barrier. Barrier means must be there was a wall. Remove the barrier and dash to fit in Japan. Now we need a verb here, okay? In D and dash to fit something to fit. So we're looking for a verb, okay? To fit in Japan. Now, how do you know? Is it an ing verb, simple verb, ed verb? How do I know? Because then you have to look at the word before and, right? before and and after and the verbs the nouns they look the same so ed we need an answer for ed if you look at ed here there's halted to fit in doesn't make sense adapted to fit you adapt to fit in something so adapted is the correct answer now do your questions and let's see what you get okay so pause the video okay all right welcome back okay guys welcome back i hope you get all of them correct all right in this one um let's have a look number two um the second uh, we already did number one so number two would be dash or unable so it will be unwilling or unable yeah unwilling or unable so unwilling is the correct answer number three the answer is dash or their lines so practice their lines Number four, dash of. The answer would be beginning of because you read the sentence, it says starting off. You read a little bit further, starting off. So beginning of and starting off. Okay, the last one, um, the answer would be create more because there's no ing before end. If you look, right? To elaborate, add details. So the answer must be create. All right. All right, now let's move to the next slide. You've already learned earlier about the verb in sim uh, simple, I'm uh, sorry. You've learned um, earlier that you have learned the all the helping verb, am, is, are, do you remember that? Now you need to know the simple verbs, okay? Sorry, uh, model verbs. So what are model verbs? There are actually, there's many of them, but I would like you to memorize nine, okay? On your screen, let's just put that on your screen, okay? Um, can and could may and might should and would will and shall okay and must these are the nine models please write them down you need to memorize them because after these models these are the most frequent um, ones that comes in the exam if you see these words after this if there is a blank it will be a verb in simple form so after model verb will be in simple form now let's solve the question in your booklet now put a pause in there okay okay welcome back okay number one fingerprints can dash that fingerprints can prove that that's right number two um, it must then dash the appropriate price it must then determine the price number three listeners can dash um, listeners can dash in any time listeners can cut in any time okay number four difference in personality may 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 also dash apart may also play a part and the last one is discussion can build up okay so what did you learn so what did we learn after models if there is a blank verb will be in simple form just like two verb after two verb will be in simple form so they don't apply the same they both apply the same formula all right easy one all right let's move to the next and the final slide and we are done okay let's move to the next slide 
All right. Now, before you move to the next slide, you can see a diagram in front of you. One of my colleagues did it, designed it for you, okay? A diagram telling you what is a preposition, okay? Think of this as a moon and think of the different position a man could stand, okay? So the man is on the moon, the man is onto the moon, the man is beside the moon, the man is out of the moon. Can you see that? So this is called preposition. So the general idea is that in PTE, if you see preposition, after preposition, if there is a blank, okay, we usually use an ING, okay? It's pretty easy. If you see a preposition, the answer would be ING verb. Put the, pause the video and let's try it. All right, let's come back. All right, you're almost to the end. Number one, before undertaking action plan. Okay, undertaking. Number two, leapfrogging. What the hell does leapfrogging means? I don't know, right? Exactly, that's, that's the idea. You don't know the meaning of leapfrogging, but you know after preposition, it will be an ING. 100% guarantee, even if you don't know the meaning of the answer, I mean, the meaning of the word meaning, you got it right because after preposition, it will be ING. All right, number three, delivering. That's right, delivering. And number four, most likely you got this wrong, okay? The answer is not placing because placing is like you place something physical, placing a bottle on the table. This is not placing would not be the answer. The answer is incorporating. You incorporate a design and energy build together. They join together, incorporate, okay? Incorporate is the answer. All right, sorry I made you confused, but I had to give you a little bit tough to make you understand. So that's it, we are finished, we have finished. Now you have learned all 12 rules, okay? I did say 13, there is another rule. Now remember something, don't forget that these rules, you can get only 10 correct because in a PT exam, you will get five blanks, right? In a paragraph, five blanks. And you're probably able to apply one or two rules. Rest of the three blanks, it's all on you. I'm sorry. It's all on you, so you have to learn it. There's no shortcut. These are the shortcut that we use, but it helps to get 10 blanks correct on average. Rest, you need to get five more correct. You have to depend on word meaning. How do I do that? You need to improve, uh, you need to practice exam questions. So we've got one more part to go. This is my last one in the third section. Um, we're going to solve some question. Um, we, I'm going, we're going to be solving 20 more blanks, okay, using these 13 grammar rules. Plus, I'm going to solve um, two exam questions in front of you um, and see whether you can do it, okay? You will see that some blanks, are, I'll use the grammar rules. Some blanks, I don't able to use any grammar rules. And let's see whether we can get them right or wrong, okay? And that will be the end of our class, okay? And that's this Let's move to the next section.